the best week of my trading career. Very happy about it. Wanted to do a recap because I like to celebrate the wins every now and then. It's been a long journey. I've had a lot of ups, I've had a lot of downs, and I know that, you know, at times it can feel really easy to only celebrate the good. I've definitely shown the bad that can happen, and there's there's plenty of bad when it comes to trading. But you got to celebrate the wins. And this past week was the best week that I've ever had. And a lot of it came from Tesla being on fire as well as the market just being on fire. And then finally having the confidence to pull the trigger on setups that I liked and it all paid off. So I just want to go over a review and I took a decent amount of trades, but what I'll do is I'll go over all the Tesla trades because that's where a majority of the P&L came from. So just going right into the statement, this is my interactive brokers. It's the broker I use. I like them a lot. And I did the June 8th to June 12th realized summary breakdown. The top right here, this is I traded stock. So I traded, I tried to short Boeing a couple of times and it just didn't work out. Every other thing that did was all long. It, it just continuously tells me that I am better to the long side when the market is on fire than I am when I try to short. Even when stocks go down, I could never just, I can't seem to, to time the entries. I mean, of course, I've made money to the downside, but being able to time it is tough. And the, the pullbacks, they, they can, they're, sometimes they can happen and they're very aggressive and it's hard to just, it's hard to hold, it's hard to get it right. But Boeing, I ended up taking two trades and lost 161 bucks. Those, that's two trades combined. So overall, manage the risk well. And then here's a couple uh, BYD flat trade. So it just goes to show that, you know, give something a shot. If it doesn't work relatively quickly, get out. And then this also right here, the Tesla thousand calls. This is the day where it broke a thousand and there was crazy price action. Ended up just taking it for pretty much flat. And then a couple of days where it was just, you know, big P&L. Tesla, 838 bucks, 1820 22 bucks, which is, that's huge. So, it was, it was focusing on Tesla and coming from the video of saying Tesla going to make new all-time highs. That was, that was kind of my video on letting me know and everyone else know that this, I'm going to, this is going to be on watch until it gets there too bad. I'm not comfortable swing trading because I could have just taken a position and probably been better off, but I, I ended up, you know, finding setups on it almost every day and came out all right. So 3,746 bucks and five cents for the week. That's awesome. All right, so now just going through some, some breakdowns and I'll just go to the chart. Uh, and so on Monday, and I have the, the picture of the execution and then obviously I'm gonna have a, a one minute chart to the right and I just wanna break down kind of what it looks like. So on Monday, Tesla had the gap up right here and it looked so good to just break all time highs. That's what it looked like on the daily. And you're, I'm thinking, this is, gonna, this is gonna make a new all time high, it's just a matter of when. Could we get there today? I have no idea. So this thing gaps up. Now what I do is even though I have a strong conviction that this is going to be a long, I want to find the technical pattern. I don't just go long off the open because I feel like it's going to go higher. That I've been burned doing that. I find the technical pattern and I, I will continuously keep saying I have a handful of setups and quickly off the open, I like the opening range break. I just want a little bit of consolidation, some sort of channel, and then a clear entry as to where this thing could possibly continue higher. So off the open, first two minute candles were just straight up, straight up. I don't see anything there. I'm not chasing that. I don't want to touch it. Let it pull back. And it has the pullback. It has a nice pullback, right around 50%, lower volume. This thing holds, puts in a higher low. This is the candle where I was looking at the tape and I just saw buyers. Now, when I'm looking at the tape, I just use it to see the order flow. And I just want to know that people are still chasing this thing and there's still a ton of buyers. Buyers are still very much in control. And that's exactly what I got. And then I ended up taking this long right here. So I took it long on this candle, right around 926, anticipating the new high. So here's a clear, clear range. Anticipate the new high gets the break, and then has some follow through. And I was only in this for two minutes. And I ended up taking this from 926 to about a high of 932. 
Six points in two minutes. I will take that all day. And the reason why I don't like to hold long for a long period of time is because this had everything written on it that this could potentially go higher. And what did it do after the fact? Pulled, pulled back. I don't want to be a part of that. That will mess with me having to hold this. Yeah, I'd rather take the quick pop off the open and then now be in the driver's seat for the day to be able to make decisions as to whether or not I want to get back in. Does this set up again? Fine. But I usually have a rule that if I take a good trade off the open and I've made a decent amount of money, just call it a day. Because anytime I trade after nine, I usually give money back more than I do make. So this was that, this was the clean opening range break. One, two, three, four, has five minutes of consolidation and that sixth candle starts to move towards the highs. I try to anticipate the break. Once we get the break and it speeds up, I'm out. Nice trade. And then Tuesday, Tuesday was where I actually was the $1,800 trade on Tesla. I kept looking at this thing and every single time it would, it would you know, come to a technical level or start to move higher. I was thinking eventually we're going to get to those all-time highs. Now it's just about, you know, waiting and finding patterns. And here is where I saw the opportunity on Tuesday. So Tesla had a little bit of a gap down the next day and started to sell off off the open. And as much as there was some opportunities to maybe find a short here, I was not thinking short. Even though the pattern, I can take the patterns that I have and the setups that I have and apply them to almost every single day, I also want to have the bigger time frame thesis here. And the bigger time frame was the daily is on fire. And we are not too far away from all-time highs. I think we're going to get there. So let's just focus to the long side. Let's focus to the long side. When I look at this, it has a nice sell-off, kind of double bottom. I actually see where I, you know, a possible pretty aggressive entry. Price caught up to the averages, knowing that you know, the technical level above high a day, if this thing goes through high a day, I think we go higher. That could have been a really aggressive entry, giving it a shot and then holding through high a day. I didn't end up taking that. I was just waiting, 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 and right there. That's exactly where I took it. So I will zoom in on this. Hopefully it's clear enough to see, but there's the option contract where I got long. Took it around 20 bucks and rode these for over $4. So I took it right here through 944. And I have the arrow as to which candle I went long on, and I took it right on the break. So this thing pushed up to 944, and then 944 is the technical level. So technical level break momentum scout. 30 minutes plus off the open. We have a high a day set, a low a day set, and from 8 o'clock on, this is really 10 because this is an Eastern Standard Time. So from 10 o'clock on, buyers are clearly in control. Tesla Daily's on fire. We're not too far away from all-time highs. The technical level is the high a day. I think if we break the high a day, there's going to be some follow through. I took it long right on the break, right there at 944. And it went from 944. And I held this a little bit longer than I normally do just because I had conviction that the follow through, it could, it had one more leg up. Ended up holding this through the little flag pattern. And then right here, going into right around 952 is where I took this off because that, that was a really big move. So, and that was it. And from this trade, right, from 44 to about 50, 51, 52, that was the $1,800 trade, which was awesome. And then after, and the reason why I like to take the quick moves, just show another example. You try to hold this thinking that this has, for some reason, an outlier day where it's just going to keep going. And then this is what you got to deal with. I do not want to deal with that. Pulling back on me, even making a new low, looks like it's going to fall apart. And then I don't, that's where mentally I can start making mistakes. So when I get the move and I get the quick pop and price starts to really extend, I start getting out. So overall, very happy with it. I ended up trading the 10 too. I ended up getting out of this flat. So this was a scratch trade. And I got, I got kind of lucky on this trade. And this was just, this was more just watching the tape, just watching the tape because pretty nasty action. And it was that candle right there that I ended up. So the next day had another gap up and I figured that, all right, we're through all time highs. It's a, that's a big gap. The only, the only downside to this day is that the gap was excessive. So when the gap is excessive, it can be tougher to trade. But being that there was so much momentum at the back of Tesla, I obviously still wanted to watch it. And I just wanted to wait for some sort of setup and then give it a shot. I ended up taking this long right here. So let this do what it's got to do off the open. I didn't see anything clean. 
Yeah, it had a break to the downside, but this thing has so much momentum at its back, I'm not trying to short it. I don't want to short this thing and get caught. Right here is where I gave it a shot. And I, so there's the technical level. The technical level is the high a day. Once we cracked through it, I ended up giving this thing a shot. And this was crazy price action. I was a part of this when this wicked up and the options had a nice move. I wanted to hold for just a little bit longer because it wasn't even a minute. It wasn't even a minute. And I was looking at the tape right here. And when this thing pulled back and it just, the action started to get weird, I ended up getting out. I didn't like it. It didn't feel right. Once I saw it rip through the whole number and instantly reverse, I bailed. And this is the, the $50 trade where I had just a flat trade on Tesla. So I ended up getting pretty lucky on this, but because of that, once in the money and this thing starts to come back, if, if it starts to pull back on me quick, just get out. I can always reevaluate after I did that. And I got out of this alive because look at the candle after that, this thing went down almost 10 points. And after that, I didn't really like anything. The, the action was nuts. The contracts were really pricey. And there was, it, the gap was just so excessive that I didn't think it was going to be very clean after that. So I left it alone. The 12th, I ended up taking a really quick scalp on this. So this was Friday, ended up taking a nice scalp on it and finished the week strong, which felt really good. So, and then it fell apart. So there was actually opportunities here. Going back to Thursday. So before I go over Friday, this is where I see an opportunity. I missed an opportunity on Tesla, missed an opportunity here. So here is, I mean, this is even like, this is an opening range break right here, right? Because you have a few minutes consolidation and then what, and the gap down was pretty excessive. A few minutes consolidation breaks over the high. So right around 990 and has a move into the gap. I don't really feel that comfortable with that trade, but I do have to recognize that it was a clean setup, knowing that the stock is really strong, knowing that the daily has a ton of momentum and buyers are still willing to pay up for this stock and massive follow through. This is where I see a very clean pattern, a very clean setup. And I didn't take it. So then this is Thursday. So this isn't even, I just didn't have Tesla on my radar because I didn't really like it. It, it was, it would gap down a lot. And I said, you know, I just want to avoid the mental stress of trying to deal with this right now. And let's see if I can find something else. But here was where I saw a good opportunity. So strong, strong stock, let it do its thing off the open, big move higher, big move lower, failed to go lower. Buyers clearly step back in and take control, go over the high a day. And we and then there's a little bit of consolidation right here. Price catches up to the moving average. Trying to anticipate the break a high a day. Right there, right around 102, 103, anticipating the high a day break. Nice little flag pattern set up and get nice follow through. And I would be out right there. That was it. So from 102, 103, all the way up to about 107, 108, very fast move higher. So that was opportunity cost missed because I didn't have Tesla on my chart and it still had a great setup. So now go to Friday, the last trade I took and how I ended the week. And I ended up taking the options for just a really, really fast scout. So knowing that this thing is still strong and people are going to still want to be by it, still want to buy this name. It was just about, all right, let's try to find a pattern. This is where I see an opportunity. Buyers clearly step in and take control. It says a 14 point rip off the low pulls back right there. This is where I end up seeing this is, this is more of a momentum, momentum scalp long because it's still within the first 10 minutes of the day. A little bit of a flag pattern. I took it long just through 984. Go back to the execution right there, just through 984. And I took the quick move. Another example of why I take the quick moves. 984, I think I got a pop to like 986 and change, and I just took it off towards the high of that candle right there. So about 986 and change, 987, very fast move. And the reason why I take the quick move is because look at what happened after. Had I tried to hold this, and this was also when the market was falling apart, so factoring in other things. The market was starting to sell off. The market was weaker. The sentiment had changed a little bit. It wasn't necessarily the buy everything, buy every dip by any means. There was some weakness that had shown in the tech sector in, in some of the other names. 
And had I held this, look at this, this thing came all the way back. And as a matter of fact, right there, even though this is a little extended, big move off the high, comes all the way back down, cracks the low and has follow through. And this thing just continuously kept setting up. Every little flag break lower, nice momentum scalp short, boom, breaks the low, follow through. But there were actually setups to the downside. And I listened to my rule because last Friday, is when I ended up trading Boeing and I took, I overtraded it and I had a really big loss. So I listened to my rules of avoiding overtrading, even though I saw a lot of the opportunity to potentially take this to the downside of, I take my one good trade off the open and I walk and call it a day. So that was it for Friday. And then that was it for an awesome week. And some of the other trades were just, you know, quick little scalps on the video nothing too crazy, really wanted to just go over the Tesla because that's where majority of the P&L came from. Waiting for a name to catch momentum and then just riding it. So I'm starting to notice, obviously I like to wake up and be active every single day, but realizing that a majority I think of where the P&L is gonna come from or when the big market moves happen, whether it be the market as a whole or it be the names individually, something catches momentum and then try to juice it as much as I possibly can. And I probably could have sized up a little bit, gone bigger on some of the trades on Tesla, but overall I think I did a good job because I didn't want to get in trouble and be caught in the wrong side of this thing. Cause you get caught in the wrong side of Tesla and those losses, those losses are huge. So that is the the weekly recap. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know how you did. Cause this was a little bit of a crazy week. It was extremely bullish the first handful of days and then going into the week, sellers took control. So it should be interesting to see what happens next week. And until then, I'll see you later.